talk about this right here, right now. Uh, and it's 95-7 the game. The Giants have uh, snapped their losing streak. They have defeated the Arizona Diamondbacks by a final of 9-3. to And uh, and we can dive into this a little bit. 888-957-9570. Because there is much, much, much to discuss with this baseball team. The frustration has been completely boiling over uh, in an understandable way. And I don't know about you, Dibs, as we could take a few minutes and dive into this. I was really thankful to see what we saw last night from Bob Melvin. Um, and I don't know how many of you stick stuck around to hear it. You know what I mean? Like the Giants were, it, it certainly appeared, were way out of this game. Eight to two going into the eighth inning or whatever. And so I, I flirted with the idea I thought about turning it off, and then I was like, that's not the kind of fan I am. Let's check it out. And then, yes, it's three-run homer, and then there's base runners in the ninth, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's a baseball game. But they lost, and after the game, uh, Bob Melvin uh, had uh, had this to say. When you're going through losing streaks, at least you fight. For the most part, we have. That was an awful game. And we made it interesting at the end, but didn't play well. Made Harry get multiple outs. We had a starter on the ropes every inning. Couldn't cash in. It's a bad game and a bad stretch by us. What do you think stood out worse? Just we just looked like we were running around in quicksand for a while. So, it is what it is. But doesn't feel very good when you play like that. Do you mean defensively? Everything. You know the at bat we have guy on the ropes every inning and can't cash in, but a couple of runs. It's just a bad game. Was that a message that was related to this game? I I'm not going to talk about what I what I say to anybody. Um, the visual that goes with this for me is even better than the audio. He is rocking back and forth, um, and not in a like rocking chair on the front porch sort of a way. No, rocking back and forth in a I'm about to throw something off the wall sort of a way. And his face was redder than my face. Yes, and I tend to have a red face. <laughs> red face Jones. He was red. He was rocking, he was angry, and he was patiently answering the questions until you got to the end when they asked him about the message that he sent. And uh, I'm not going to get into the message that I said or what I said to the players, but if you would have had him on Truth Serum and he would have given you the answer, he, I'm sure, would have told you that he told the team that 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 sort of a bullshit effort mm -hmm. is completely unacceptable. It will not be tolerated we're better than that, and you all collectively had better pull it out, pull your heads out of your pockets, and start playing baseball. Because that the way they lost that game with defenders not remembering to cover second base, shortstops making errors, Casey, Casey Schmidt, Schmidt, and like he said, you had him on the hook repeatedly. It was bases loaded wow. every and, time and, he turned around and, and he didn't score. And the worst at bat of all the bat uh, bad at bats did belong to Casey Schmidt. It's funny that you called it Bull Schmidt because he was awful yesterday. Yeah. And I have no problem saying that even about a young player because it was Little League crap. Absolute Little League crap by Schmidt and Wisely. Kicking balls, flailing, swinging wildly in situations where you absolutely had to put the ball in play. And then the mental error of not even covering second base on a bunt is something that at, major, that at the major league level you flat out cannot and usually don't see. So it was interesting because Melvin's screaming and yelling here to the reporters mainly about the at-bats. He's talking mainly about the offense. Yeah. Listen to what Grandy put together with their defense. Shot on the ground. Schmidt can't come up with it. Get on the ground, and Schmidt's going to slow it down. And he slowed it down just enough for everybody to move up a bag. Off the glove of Chapman. And the throw home is not in time. Schmidt right through his glove. Now well, they're going to give Marte a base hit, but that's not a base hit. On the ground is Schmidt. Schmidt kicks it around and everybody's safe. Bunts it. Jackson's got it. Nobody there. Then he throws to first. Hmm. I'm wondering what Wisely was doing. And Wisely never moved. 
I don't know if I've ever seen that. I mean, you have to go to suck it. I'm so sorry, Crook and Kipe. I NBC mean, Kipe, Sports Bay Area. NBC Sports Bay Area. I got Kipe, you, Grandy. Kipe's a, Kipe's a second baseman. Right. I, uh, just I've never there, seen that. Uh, listening to this, and you can hear the disdain and the frustration even in his voice. The ball went off of Casey's glove four times. Can I just weigh in real quick of with this piece of it? I know Go. I can. I just it's the way for me to to kind of pre precede what I'm going to say. The Giants were charged for one error in yesterday's game. That's a bunch of bullshit. Right. And and nothing has ever been more bullshit than that. What has happened to official scoring in Major League Baseball? And I saw Andy Baggerly put out a tweet about this. I think it was during yesterday's game where we just don't give errors anymore. And Casey Schmidt easily could have been tabbed for two, if not three oh, errors. If not more, for right. sure. For and sure. just listening to all those cuts, those were four or five plays that needed to be made at this level, and they weren't. And I checked the box, and they were charged with one error. Casey Schmidt's first of the year. Somewhere Marco Luciano's rolling over in his huh. bed, and he's thinking, what the hell? Yeah. Where was that official score when I needed him? Well, it's funny because somewhere along the line, the stats of the whole thing, maybe it's tucked into the fact that it's so much seemingly harder to hit. Um, now in baseball, they right. want more hits. They want more action. But I, I wonder if they realize you're affecting stats in the other direction. How does Kyle Harrison feel about this? Those runs were largely almost all unearned in my mind. But what? I think they, I think three of the four that he was charged with end up being earned runs. And Kyle wasn't great yesterday. He's a young player who's worked, but he's better. He wasn't bad. Yeah. He logged six innings. He, yes, he needs more consistency and, and dynamic results out of his breaking pitches, his non fastball. That's the, you know, you get deep into the weeds with Kyle Harrison. Um, but outside of that, yeah, he's got a bunch of stats on, on, on his ERA that are, that are undeserved. I was so, like, Bob Melvin went, quote, off. I would have loved to see him go off even more. Like, that was absolute Little League junk last night that the Giants put out there. And there was another rant that I loved. And by the way, we are talking Giants baseball after their 9-3 win today. Glad they ended the losing streak. But this is your spot if you want to call in and get anything off your chest or talk about it right now, 888-957-9570. Then there's a lot to get into. Matos got sent down before the game started. Right. Austin Slater led off, went one for four, struck out twice, um, including once in a huge situation where, again, the ball needed to get put in play. It was great. They hit the long ball today, so they got nine runs, and one of them was a grand slam. Flores, Ramos, Soler, who only hits when there's no one on base, he did it again. I'm not trying to come down Soler's road. I know how bad he wants this. But it's so obvious what's happening to him. It's literally like, dude, when there's runners on base, don't swing. Because all they're doing is throwing curveballs in the dirt to you. And you want it so bad that you're swinging out of your shoes. And if you make contact with one of those breaking balls, it's a grounder to short or a pop-up to first. Seemingly every time, if you get a bat on it. Or a strikeout. Lo and behold... When you come up in the next inning with no one on, you get a fastball and you tank it 15 rows deep. That's great. That's great. But, dude, they're not giving you any fastballs because they know they don't have to. Yeah. This is not some sort of a quirk of, of the statistical arrangement. Six of his seven home runs this year with nobody on. And so your your take is spot on in terms of the stats. And he's now batting after today's one hit with a runner in scoring position, he's now hitting 173 with runners in scoring position on the year. 173, your Dude. big free agent slugger who does all his slugging when he's all alone on the diamond. <laughs> Home alone, Macaulay Culkin. That's who your cleanup hitter is. Again, I really, I really dig that's that they. That, I, I, I dig that they won today, um, and that's that's great. But where this ends up. And there was another rant today that I heard that I really liked, and it came from FP. And FP was like, look, a lot of you got excited with this play the kids moniker. And I get it. He gets it. We all get it. I get excited about play the kids too. But with one firm caveat, if they are winning 
and succeeding play the kids. But I will forever, every June for the rest of my life, and May, and April, all of those months that happened before August, I will forever reject when people throw their hands up and go, ah, crap, play the kids. These guys suck. Because listen to what happens when they play the kids. <laughs> Bob Melvin's freaking out in, in, in the visiting clubhouse. Yeah. Twitter is alive with Giants fans who are ripping Farhan Zaidi sideways, and I get it. But by the same token, you said play the kids. Matos goes 0 for a week and a half. Schmidt made Luciano look good with the way he played short last night. Wisely doesn't even know where the hell to go on a bunt. And you want to play the kids. If you want to play the kids, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get what looks like moronic baseball sometimes. So for me, sitting wherever they are, I haven't even looked, a game out of the wild One card. One game out, Mark. A game out of the wild card. No, I don't want to play the kids. If it's going to lead to that, that was terrible. Like that. Now, this is the word that gets overused in sports media. It's embarrassing. Yeah. Like when you lose. No, it's not embarrassing when Aaron Judge hits a home run. He's Aaron Judge. It's not embarrassing when Juan Soto hits a home run. He's Juan Soto. Last night, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. When you've got a bunt play and your second baseman doesn't cover second and you've got a shortstop who doesn't really look like he's that dialed in on the ball game. My 10-year-old is in his uniform at Boyle Park right now getting ready for a game and he would have covered second. Yeah. He knows. I mean, that's Little League, right? That's a situational play that from the time you're eight or nine years old, you pretty much know as a second baseman. If there's a bunt and there's a runner on first and it's to the left side, your job is to run over there and... Just be near second base in case we want to, I don't know, get a force out over at second. And you mentioned play the young guys, Luis Matos, over his last 14 games. He was batting 153 <laughs> with three runs batted in and an OPS of 343. And that's 14 games. That's two weeks of the struggle bus, as we like to say. It was a big time struggle bus. And so... Like you know, and I think you're right about Bob Melvin. He probably got done with last night's game and last night's rant, and Slater's getting close to being ready, and he's thinking, you know what, can I get a grown man up in here? Because the kids right now, they're starting to frustrate, frustrate me yeah. a little bit. Like, look, I know that they said Matos had some runway. Now he's going to be the center fielder, but not not if you a buck 20 right. or whatever you just said. 143. Like, no. Yeah. No. There's a season to play. There's a season to play. So we're not doing play the kids just because. And the whole, like, let's ride with it when it's frustrating. No. I, I'm a hard no on that. There's no ride with it. You play well or get the hell out of here. And well, you're a game out of the, of, of the wild that, card right that, now. That goes for the veterans, too. Exactly. But, the, but, but if, you're, if you're the Giants, and I get it, I would love, it's like I want to see these kids play well but I don't want to see them not play well. It's like I feel like there's a lot of people out there that are like, no, we want to see them play just because they're kids, whether they're no. good or not. And if they're not good, then, you know, let's just see what they got. I am so not in let's see what they got mode. So if you are sitting in a spot, and, and, and I know you might be thinking, well, Mark, Slater's also hitting a buck 40. Well, what's the tiebreaker? between Luis Matos and Austin Slater. I would bet a lot of you are like, well, Matos, because young and exciting, and let's see. No, my tiebreaker would be, one's been in the bigs for seven years and has a resume. And so, and by the way, has had a lot fewer at-bats this year than Luis Matos right. in a short period of time. So if, if there's a tiebreaker there, Let's go with the guy who's shown that he's a big leaguer. I don't even know if Matos is a big leaguer. Well, let's see if, if Slater is still a big leaguer because he hasn't been healthy, and now he has a chance to go out there and show that he can be the player that he's been in the past because you do have a track record with Austin Slater, and it hasn't been what he's shown you so far this year in a small sample. But for me, the only goal, the only aim at this point in the year with 99 games left to go is win the baseball game. And if you think that Austin Slater gives you a better chance than Luis Matos, then we're going to have to wait on play the kids because 
You're three games below 500. You need to win baseball games. No doubt. Ramos stays because he's a winning player right now. So where do you stand on...